Пожалуйста, настройте ваш универсальный переводчик на язык, который вам понятен. And today we're going to talk about a movie called The Mating Habits of the Earthbound Human. Now, this is a film that I knew nothing about until Ian showed me the cover. <laughs> And I thought he'd just pulled this out of his secret porn collection. When you read the title and look at the cover... It kind of suggests that that's the kind of tone that it's going for. <laughs> until I realized it's actually a comedy. Ian, why don't you uh, give us the synopsis for The Mating Habits of the Earthbound Human? <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the story basically follows uh, Carmen Electra and Mackenzie Aston as two humans uh, living on Earth, and they meet in a club, and they develop a relationship over the course of the movie. But we don't actually realize that because we've got David Hyde Pierce, uh, Fraser's brother, um, talking to us as an alien David Attenborough. Of all the creatures in the universe, none possess the mating ritual as complex, as perverse, as tragically beautiful as the earthbound human. More passionate than the Arctamus of Centali V, more neurotic than the Slikanda of Slipa, it is a wonder that these furry creatures have not gone extinct millennia ago. He is he is infinite squared, and we are, as the audience, are aliens from another planet, any planet you can think of, and we are watching humans mate. It's what's the breeding cycle, right? <laughs> yeah. It's it's a film that that explores the entire um reason that humans are still in existence today and the reasons why we haven't gone extinct <laughs> and the film kind of follows man and woman uh first meeting each other in a nightclub perfect man and perfect woman uh, yeah yeah you could say as common electra yeah so. it's common electra <laughs> this one is clearly reserved for wealthy tribal chieftains to prepare for mating she sways her hips and flails her behind in an attempt to dislodge her egg from her uterus. And, and it follows them through all of the trials and tribulations of getting the first phone number, the first kiss, uh, you know, moving in, taking the relationship to the next level, meeting the parents. It follows all of your generic um, rom romantic comedy formulas. It's what aliens think that humans go through. It is, yeah. That That is the joke. That is the running joke throughout the entire film, is that this is a, a what-if aliens were actually watching humans, and what would they actually observe by, by watching us, and yeah. how they interpret it. Jenny Smith. The male and female rub their paws together. The female studies the male, as he in turn studies her. Chanel. Shampoo. Um, okay, well, it's nice, but, you know, it suits you. A lot of the scenes are played out uh, a normal-style rom-com style. The guy gets the girl's phone number, then he loses said phone number, and he has to go around and he has to search for it, which is, in a way, quite romantic, because, obviously, he's a nice guy, he's an accountant, so he, he goes through every Jenny Smith in the <laughs> phone book and just phones different people up looking for his Jenny Smith. So, what, you're going to call, like... Every J. Smith in the entire phone book? It's only like four or five pages. It's a belly you lost her. The male will not forego the mating ritual. The species must prevail. It will be very difficult for him. He, he finally does, but the, the, the funny thing is, we've actually seen it from Jenny's side, where she is not wanting to put out to him, but is just sat there looking at the phone. Ring. Ring now. Okay, in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Ring. Okay, that was zero. Ring now. Ring. The female in heat. But then we have David Hyde Pierce at the whole time narrating to us why these humans are doing what they're doing. You know, and even he finds it hard to describe to other aliens 
why humans are so difficult when it comes to relationships. You know, the guy loses the phone number and his friend pretty much just stands there and tells him straight, you know, don't call her, don't worry about it, you know, just play it cool. And David Hyde Pierce is like, we have no clue what they're talking about. Please do not adjust your universal translator. We are not experiencing technical difficulties. This is a human thing. It makes no sense to us either. <laughs> it's like that he doesn't understand why they have to put on layers of dead animal clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like whether he has to shave or not shave, or whether she puts, you know, different chemicals in her hair or on her body just to... Yeah. And the fact that she hides the second layer of clothing. She uses chemically altered forms of vegetation to cover parts of her body, then other forms of vegetation over those. She leaves much of her body uncovered, but is careful to cover the first layer of vegetation. It's all of those little observations that they are quite funny because they are quite innocently cute, but it starts to get old after a while. It's a kind of... It's a formula that perhaps to me would have probably been should have been shortened down a little bit because yeah, like a like a Saturday Night Live one episode. Yeah, you know, um, I I do like the interplay between the two leads, uh, even though for the most part they're being narrated over the top of, so you don't actually hear or see all of the conversations they're having. They are a likable enough two lead characters. Yeah, uh, for me, I would have, would have perhaps would have rather there been more stories going on around them than it just following this one one couple and just seeing other different relationships at different areas yeah. that undergo different things because this is just, you know, one straight line through this, yeah. you know, typical uh, relationship well, from a romantic comedy. He does say, obviously, if these two people fail to copulate and breed, they will just start filming somebody else. I'm pregnant. Remember when you said you'd pull out? You bastard. And you're not alone. We're totally going to be here for you. It's going to be fine. Nervous about the male's reaction, the female tries to mate with her own pack. But that's a whole other movie. Yeah. So, so you get the impression that they are doing this to a lot of people all around the world and they're doing it to different planets because obviously you see different creatures, you know, they talk about humans sniffing each other and then you <laughs> cut to dogs sniffing each other and then this weird little eyeball thing on the floor. <laughs> it looked like a shit with a bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I, I, I feel that that's, the, that's also the good thing about this film is that you do have, you've got your typical perfect man, perfect woman and you know, both char both lead characters are really nice and you can get along with them but in a normal film it, it wouldn't work because bad things don't seem to happen to these two people. You know, there's that bit where Carmen Electra is sat at work and she's just looking out the window and her boss comes along and says why don't you get back to work? And she's like, oh, it's such a beautiful day. <laughs> and I'm like, in, in a normal human life, that wouldn't happen. But obviously these aliens are taking one bit and they're editing it in with another bit just to let the story go on so that they can explain that, you know, she's she's in the pack of women women, <laughs> and they're, they're talking and, you know, they're, they're vying for dominance. But she's her chemical imbalance in her brain, <laughs> he talks about, it has made her fall in love with the the male. <laughs> well, I do like the scenes where they talk about the pack mentality, <laughs> where you have the guy who goes back to the other guys and, you know, they console him when yeah. things aren't going well and they tell him that he's being pussy whipped. Hey, I'm not whipped, all right? I've been stalling for like three weeks on this thing already and, and it's important to her, so I gotta do it. You're whipped. Good as married. God help you. <laughs> Next thing, it'll be marriage. So, but again, they're all the traditional tropes that you have in any of these romantic comedies. I think yeah. they're even credited in the credits as male friend, female yeah. friend one, female <laughs> friend two. It's like in a script, that's usually what they are. Yeah. So, well, it's like a it's like a science report though. Yeah. So they didn't give these characters names just because these are just subjects. You know, subject one, subject two. They spoke. <laughs> you know, something happened. But I, that, that, like I said, that's that's what I really love. I mean, I love the. Uh, the the in depth look of what happens when they have sex, that is probably the the funniest, most memorable moment of the film because it <laughs> it's it takes you outside of the film. Uh, it's a this is a what it would look like yeah. when they're having sex, and of course they're having protected sex, and so you see the the guy at the running line fires the starting <laughs> yeah. piston, and you see all of these guys in white suits running just down the running. running down the track, and they've all got X and Ys on their backs and of course they just run straight into a cushioned wall. <laughs> yeah. And 
and endure. The Sperminator scene. Uh, you know, if you want to explain how a spermicide works, just have a guy with an M60 just firing all <laughs> over the place. Those, those, those little bits do work, but yeah, at the same time, the film... I, I, the, I've seen it three times in the ten years that I've owned it, and the first time I watched it, I really did enjoy it, and it made me look it it made me look at relationships in the real world in a different light. It made me just realize that yeah, some women do just wear too many clothes, and guys do spend too much time on their hair. But then watching it the second and third time, I knew the lessons and I knew the jokes that were coming up. So this this film only really works the first time, and if you're showing it to somebody for the first time. But then again, David Hyde Pierce is just brilliant. He, 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 I could just listen to him explain me things for hours. When, when they go to the restaurant and he's just like, yeah, they're herbivores and carnivores. Just seeing the, the, the silliness of Carmen Electra eating a corn on the cob and this guy just ripping meat. Because that's what humans do. <laughs> that's, that's what humans do. It was just the exaggerated animal sound effects that they <laughs> put in over the top and just the way they edited it. Um, uh, his his voice, David Hyde Pierce, he is like an omnipresent god uh, who does narrate over the entire the entire film, and his delivery and his wit with the script is actually what gels the whole movie together. And considering he is pretty much your your narrator for the whole thing, he guides you through all of these experiences of of these relationships. Obviously, some that you would have experienced in your own life, yeah, and some that you probably will have been aware of your friends going through or something similar. As true mating grows ever nearer, the male seeks medical advice from the large female. Instead, she sticks him with needles and sucks out his blood. What a bitch, thinks the male. Not to be outdone by her partner, the female puts herself through the same ordeal. But she too thinks that the large female is a big, fat bitch. But, I, I don't know, it, it all seemed really contrived, just, you know, the... the the crazy parents, <laughs> yeah. uh, the the parent scene. I don't. I, I I I wanted to understand why he explained it. Did did they were they actually like that? And they changed, <laughs> or was he just making it up? Because that whole the whole scene is just freaky. Where the dad just comes in, he throws the kids' toys all over the place, tells him to be a proper child and stop being so clean, and then says, "I love you," and storms off. And then <laughs> then the mother wanders in, and I'm looking at them like. In a way, my parents were kind of like this, but I wouldn't explain it like this. <laughs> yeah, well, it just added the. It was a nice setup for the scene where he does introduce Carmen Electra to his to his parents, and they're tr you know they come across to her as being like a nice normal couple. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as she, her back's turned, you know they're like, "You fucked her yet?" <clears throat> She's so nice. Yeah, yeah, she is nice. She has beautiful eyes. Mm. Thank you. So did you fuck her? What the hell's the matter with you? Well, what, what, what'd I say? I asked if he fucked her. Well, of course he fucked her. Wouldn't you fuck her? Hell, I'd fuck her, and I'm not even into that. <laughs> well, she's got great titties. You know, it's, like, it's really quite crap. But it is, a, it is actually quite funny. Some of the scenes, even though the whole film is a little bit dated, some of the scenes do, well, even if they don't make you laugh, they'll make you smile. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it is a heartwarming film, which it does, you know, have the traditional happy ending as well. Uh, the you know yeah. humanity will live on. Thank God. <laughs> so, thank whatever species is out there. Favorite scene? My favorite scene. Um, I, I I don't say I actually have a favorite scene with this movie, but the most memorable scene is probably the sperm the sperminator. Sperminator, enemy to all semen. And, and all of those scenes. Actually, what I really liked, uh, it's a little bit of a spoiler, uh, but it's when he's driving back and uh, he's stuck at traffic lights and he looks out the window <laughs> and he can see all the sperm running on the field <laughs> and it's and, and you see a so guy he's filming, filming them and, he, and he's just like, huh, that's weird. <laughs> and he drives off. So I actually thought that was... That's, like a, that's like a broken fourth wall, isn't it? Yeah. So that was actually my favourite moment, most memorable moment of the film. See, I... I... I really enjoy this this film. If it was shortened down, I'd I'd enjoy it a bit more. It, but it's like a massive science experiment. Just just listening to all the little alien nods here and there to make you realise that you're not human. Human supposed to be watching this. But at the same time, my favourite bits have to be just the the scientific 
level of mentality when it comes to her talking to her friends or her pack and him talking to his friends and pack and then obviously going back and seeing the family and how weird the families can be and the, the sexy it's it is a feel-good heartwarming film to watch I, I, i'll just say that you slap Jeff, you've only been seeing this man for a month and you give it up just like that? Stay out of this. You're embarrassing her. It's none of your business. The females Thank of the you. pack discuss the mating okay, dance. Anyway, they are happy for her, for the propagation of their species. Males of the pack sense the progression of the mating dance as well. Doctor? Doctor. Go. The pack rejoices. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm afraid I don't recommend the mating habits of the earthbound human. It's not... It's not engaging enough anymore because we are in a in a world that is saturated with romantic comedies of varying levels of, of quality. Mm -hmm. I think this one it just kind of sits near the near the middle bottom. It's um it's so formulaic and so traditional that it just it's just part of the foundations for which all of these other romantic comedies were built upon. This film obviously has the the one slant the one angle that's different from all the others and the fact that it is com you know has a commentary over the entire movie for a lot of people that's going to be off-putting anyway because it's not going to it's not going to engage you you know where you can switch your brain off and just watch it play out although you can still do that um but for me the jokes were few and far between there were some nice setups that paid off later but they just weren't funny enough uh like 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 i said it it's a feel-good movie it will make you smile and it will yeah. make you laugh out loud in places it's just it's too long a movie in order to get its message across it should have been shortened down uh in my opinion i i recommend it for a one take you know if you if you've never seen this film and you get a copy of it watch it through it is funny and it it's good for if you're in a relationship you know you and your your girlfriend can sit down and you know look at things in your own relationship from it but yeah at the just same gonna time just going to start an argument <laughs> <laughs> at, at the same time it is a bit long and you know it, it could have just been better as a comedy sketch Aye. thanks for watching Off the Shelf Reviews And at long last, the female experiences the joy and pleasure of birth. <laughs>